Hello world, I'm Tyler, and this is my entertainment cafe. I'd like to welcome you all. I have my, uh, my collection of, uh, my guitar. I, uh, I don't really play guitar. It's not in my mother's basement. Don't worry. It's my first ever web series, and it's called The Entertainment Cafe. What do you want, Grandma? And in it, I'm gonna teach you all some tips and tricks to master any game you want, essentially. Excuse me for a moment. Just as mankind comes from the cave, video games also came from a much simpler past. I myself am the evolved state that has become, well, man. Digressing back into the cave, finding warmth from a pixelated fire. Welcome to the entertainment cafe. Me Tyler. In here, me king. Now let me take you back to simpler times, the dawn of a new age. A brief history in video games, the dawn of a new world, presented by all the fine people at Professor Ritz in association with the U.S. Department of Educational and Recreational Activities. I'm talking of the Atari 2600, the crow magnet of video game consoles. This was my first system. This was the introduction to my virtual life. Oh, but Timmy, this wasn't the first home video game console. Uh, my name's Tyler. That's right, Timmy. It was the Magnavox Odyssey, released back in the year 1972. Not like you were even around back then. Thanks, old man. But that was the ape of mankind. His battery operated, shoddy joysticks, and no sound. Atrocious little bugger, isn't it? And then there was Atari's Pong. Revolutionizing the entire world! Blah, blah, blah. Hold that communist tongue to me. Show some respect while you're at it. Yes, sir. But it wasn't until after the crash of 83, which was a sad day for all nerds alike, that triggered the rise of third generation consoles. I'm talking about the original NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Personally, I think this was the hook, line, and sinker in the form of a console. Two button controller and game cartridge. I bit in like a dumb fish and never let go. It was games like Super Mario, Contra, and Skate or Die that introduced my addiction and the first signs of my ADD. And then, there was Duck Hunt. Which, rumor has it, was used by the military to train their personnel. This system also brought along some of the first cheat codes. One of the everlasting and more popular among the gaming community is the Konami code. It's something I won't forget, not even when I'm old and senile. It goes a little something like this. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B-A. Ah. <sighs> Rolls right off the tongue. As the systems evolved, so did the cheats. Cheats were originally used for game testers. They'd been around all along, hiding just under the surface. Developers soon realized they had a gold mine sitting right under their noses. In addition to the cheats placed in the game, programmers often missed the ball and left glitches in the programming. These are little things that us gamers get a kick out of, and it usually makes gameplay a whole lot easier. One of my favorites is the 007 Goldeneye Breakdance Backslash Horrible Spasms glitch. If you remove the cartridge during gameplay, Characters and objects will spin about in an uncontrollable fashion. It's spaztastic. And thus ends our brief history in gaming history. Which brings us to the world of today. Now the game I'm playing right now is a crowd favorite called Resident Evil 5, or Biohazard 5. The cool thing about this game is that when you're finished with it, you get some cool unlockables, like infinite guns, ammo, and all the costumes you want. Now there's a few things you gotta take advantage of in this game. First of all, there's the whole inventory issue. It's a matter of life and death. And when you get used to it, well, you won't die as much. And you can't pause while accessing it, and it's the only way to actually heal yourself throughout the game and helps you load your guns faster. Now there's a glitch in this game to actually duplicate your items. First, you have to get with a friend, in co-op mode. You hand all your items, especially the items of value, to your guest, and then have your guest quit the game. Save all the progress with your guest, then quit the game with the host, without saving the game. Restart the game with the same two characters, and voila! Both inventories will be full with the same items. Do with them what you please. 
Now bear in mind, you can do this as much as you want with whatever you want. So I recommend using expensive items like rotten eggs to get the most bang for your buck. Tyler, where are you, you little nerd? Vector Squares, my brother. I gotta get the halo out of here. Hope you all had fun, hope you all learned a lot. Kill some zombies.